in Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but you should meditate in it. Somebody say meditate. You should meditate in it day and night. You should meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I started teaching last week on meditation. Before, any time you do any kind of teaching, the greatest thing in any house or building is the foundation. So the foundation for this lesson on meditation is really about the believing component, getting your believer up. Because he said something very interesting in certain scriptures. In Jesus, we just read it in, in Matthew chapter number 9 when the two blind men came to him. He asked them one question. He asked you one question. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And everybody said, yes, Lord. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And everybody said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But it's not enough to believe. You got to act on what you believe. So the meditation component is for you to meditate on the word. He said day and night, day and night. Meditation, I, I had an article that my wife gave me that the world, the world talks about meditation. Explore, explore the practice and benefits of meditation. But they got it from the scripture. If you read this, this is worldly meditation. See, Meditation work, but they got it from God. See, a lot of times we go to these seminars and we pay $1,000, $500, $100. For some, it's already in the scripture. So meditation is really the word, meditation is really the word to ponder. Meditation means to think about. Meditation means to mutter. Meditation means to ponder, to just quietly reflect about. That's all meditation is. He said, Joshua, I want for you to think about this, and I want for you to think about it day and night. Day and night. Day and night. I want for you to think about it day and night. Okay. Okay. Where are we going, Holy Spirit? Psalm 16. Psalm 16. He said, I want for you to think about this day and night, Joshua that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, then after you think about this day and night, you're going to make your way prosper. You're going to have good success. So at the end of meditating on the word, how often? Day and night. At the end of, of, of meditating on the word, day and night, day and night, and observing to do according to all that is written therein, you're going to make your, so prosperity has something to do with me. He already told me, how, anybody want to be prosper? I'm, I might be in the wrong place. We might need to come. Anybody want to be prosper? Anybody want to have good success? Hey Amen. What, what person don't? See, but he said, here's the key. Here's the key to being, now he told Joshua this in the beginning. He said, Joshua, he said, no man going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As thou with Moses, so I'm going to be with you. Now, let me tell you something, family. Let me tell you something. The Word of God said in Romans 15, 4, that these things was written for us. Joshua, Joshua's been dead thousands of years. He ain't talking to Joshua. He's talking to Terry. He's talking to John. He's talking to Linda. See, he's talking to Leonard. See, he said, he said, watch this here. He said, Joshua, no man, Terry, no man going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I would Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, Jesus, Peter, James, John, Paul, I'm going to be with you. He's talking, somebody say he's talking to me. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, now preach it. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do, man of God. I want for you to meditate on that day and night. So no matter what kind of situation I get in, I know I win. Because I know the Lord is on my side. See, he told me to meditate on it day and night, ponder, think about it. Meditation, to recite it quietly. See, people, they, I'd be at the gym. I'd be, what we call, tell my wife I'm going to the wedding. I'd be in the spa, I'm swimming, but I'm thinking about the word. I'm getting up. They see my mouth move, but they don't know what I'm saying. I'm praying in the spirit. I'm quoting that word. 
See, Lord, thank you. Everything's on schedule. Everything's on time. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. This is the day the Lord has made. See, they think, they think I'm doing Lil Wayne and Nicki Minaj. Baby, no, I'm quoting the scripture. Amen. Father, all things work together for my good. I'm praying in the spirit. Oh, sure, go to the bullshit. Holy Spirit, you know exactly how I should pray for my life, my family, my assignment, my vision, my church. In that water. Let me tell you, some man of God told me years ago, the devil scared of water. That's why the pigs ran in the water to get the devil off of. So I'm in that water. I'm getting my praise on, my worship on, my prayer life is on. See, and I'm all day long, I'm consumed in it. Why? He said, the end result is that I'm going to make my way prosperous and I'm going to have success. See, I'm going to have not just success, good success. That's why he put good, because that's success. You can have bad success. How you going to all these folk killing themselves at 30 and 40 years old, actors and singers and entertainers with millions of dollars in the bank? Man, that ain't good success. All day long. That's why I'm teaching on it. But he said, it's, it's, it's to get your believer up. Because the church don't believe. It's more non-believer believe bigger than the church. And church got the, the everlasting, eternal God behind them. So when I look in meditation day and night, Psalms what? 16, 7. Watch this here, family. This, this scripture is great in other translations. Psalm 16, 7. But we should be able to see it. It's Psalm 16, 7. He said, I will bless, I'm in Psalm 16, 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart, watch this here. He said, my heart. If you, if in, in the margin Bible, the King James Version, he said, my kidney. Let me, let me teach y'all something right now. Everybody look at me. Y'all know that we are tripartite beings. We are spirit, we possess a soul, and we live inside a physical body. So some people said, where is your spirit? Most people say their spirit is right here. No. See, your spirit, he said, out of my belly, out of your kidneys should flow rivers of living water. So he said, now watch this here, family. Go back to the scripture. He said, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart, my spirit man, my inward man, my kidneys also instruct me in the night nice season. In other words, my mind, my spirit is talking to me even while I'm asleep. See, when I go to bed at night, the first thing I do, you know what I'm saying, I tell my wife, good night, baby. Kiss her. Didn't hesitate to see, is anything on her mind? Okay, my bad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You got to be mature to catch that. Amen. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Then I put the cover on my head, and I said, Father, you know what you want to talk to me. <laughs> Come on back, family. Come on back. Amen. The marriage bed is pure, undefiled. Amen. Come on, come on back. I put the cover over my head and said, Father, you know. Somebody say focus. Amen, amen. I put the cover on my head, and I said, Father, you know what you want to say to me as I sleep. Now, I thank you for divine protection. She protect my family from trouble. She don't even know what I'm saying. This is her first time hearing it. Father, she know about the hesitation, but she don't know about the... <laughs> Father, I thank you for divine protection as you protect my family from trouble seen unseen. Now, I thank you that my spirit is open, my mind is open to receive as you, if you want to say to me, Say something to me as I sleep throughout the night. Thank you for sweet sleep in Jesus' name. And my wife can tell you within five minutes I'm asleep. And then let me tell you something. I get up in the morning and go and have my quiet time, and he talks to me. Things come to me. What? He's been talking to me as I'm asleep. See, here's the scripture go right here. Somebody pull this up in the New Living Translation. I don't have to pull it up. I have it. The New Living Translation. Watch what it says right here. That's 16-7, right? See, you think because you sleep, you sleep. No, God is talking to you. When you wake up, how many of you guys have woke up with the answer? See, what? 24? See, during the night, see? So in Psalm 16, 7, some, do I have a mic around here? Psalm 16, 7. No, you don't have to. I'm the mic. Psalm 16, 7. Where are you, Psalm 16, 7? Watch this here, family. In Psalm 16, 7, I want you to see how the New Living, it says it better. It says, 
Watch this what it says. He said, I will bless the Lord who guides me even at night my heart instructs me. See, that's why I meditate on the Word. I tell you, when a man of God says I meditate on the Word 24 hours a day, I have to show you. So when I sleep, you say, I instruct my spirit, my heart, my spirit man. Now do what you're supposed to do. You and Holy Spirit are in communion with each other. You instruct me. You give me insight, revelation, even as I sleep. One of my mentors told me years ago, everybody say years ago, Never make tough decisions while you're tired. See, you can't call me at 7, 8, or 9 o'clock at night and say, Pastor, what do you think? No, I ain't thinking about it right now because I'm tired. See, because I get up early in the morning and pray. My wife can tell you I start shutting down about 10, by 10, 30, 11 o'clock. She said, and then she, Linda's a night, she, she's up at night, her and Maddie. See, so they... That's their best. Everybody got their best time. My best time is in the morning. So by 10, 10, between 10 and 11, I started shutting down. So when she asked me a question, or somebody asked me a question, Pastor, we, I don't have an answer right now. I'm tired. I don't answer. I, I tell you in the morning. Because I know my heart is instructing me even as I sleep. And then I wake up and I pray, and all of a sudden it starts clicking. It's just like, it's just like your telephone. Somebody give me a telephone. It's just like your telephone. You turn it off at night. You should turn your telephone off unless you're a doctor. And you're an OBGYN, and you might deliver a baby at 11, 12, 1, 2 in the morning. Everybody else, come on, I'm going to help, I'm gonna help you. Turn the telephone off. How many, somebody, how many times you left your telephone by accident, and people, bloop, bloop, bloop. You said, man, will you turn? Turn your telephone off. Now, let me get another instruction. When you eat, I tell my kids, turn that telephone off. That's a distraction, family. Here's my example, though. When I wake up in the morning, I'm asleep. When I turn my telephone off, everybody who start texting me from 9, 10 o'clock on, my phone goes, broop, 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 broop. That's what the Spirit of God do when I wake up and, and I start meditating. He start bringing things, answer, broop, broop, broop. Because he's been instructing me all now, that was good. See, now, that was good. See, it started going on. I don't wake up. When my telephone starts going up in the morning, I look at it, and I put it down. See, I ain't going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on what God had to say to me. See, and that's what I'm telling you. That's the purpose of meditation. See, I'm pondering. All day long, I'm thinking about it. See, I'm thinking. That's like when I, I'm teaching right now. I'm thinking about what he wants to say to you. So he said, teach on it, and the purpose is, is to help their believer. Do you believe that I'm able? See, a lot of people believe that God is able, but do you believe he's able to, he's going to do it for you? And that's what meditation, see, I know he's working for this boy. I, I know if he ain't with nobody else, he with this preacher. See, and when you people say, I'm God's favorite child, I am. Somebody say, I am. See, and that's what he told the blind man. He said, do you believe that I'm able to do it? Then he come back in Mark chapter number 11. He said, when you pray, when you pray, when you what? So if somebody say, pray is now. He said, when you pray, pray is now. Do you believe? He said, when you pray, believe you receive it. And you, when you pray and you don't believe you receive it, you ain't going to have it. That's why he said, teach your meditation. A lot of people are praying, but they don't believe they receive it. See, I have it when I pray. I don't have the manifestation, but I have it in the unseen world. Because we understand the unseen world is more real than the seen world. The unseen world made the seen world. So he said, we understand this by faith, Hebrews chapter 11. By faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So things that are seen were made from things that you can't see. So I already got it. He says, so when you pray, believe you receive it. Don't believe you're going to get it 15 days now, 30 days now, 45, 6 months a year. No, I got it now. Somebody say, I got it now. I got it now. So I don't have to pray about that again. I just thank him for it. Father, thank you for it. Thank you for my house. Thank you for my car. Thank you for what I prayed for you. I got it now. Somebody say, thank you. So when you pray, believe you receive it, then he said, you shall have it. That's future tense. See, God does everything, spirit, then it becomes the natural realm. See, believing is the key. 
Then he come back. Go to Mark chapter number 9. That's why this preacher teaches on meditation. Meditation because a lot of folks don't believe. You think you believe. Manif manifestation supposed to show up. Mark chapter number Mark chapter number 9. And Mark chapter number 9. Watch this here, family. This, this man brought his child to the disciples and they didn't heal him. And then he brought him to Jesus. And Mark chapter 22, if you're there, say amen. I'm in Mark chapter 9, verse 22. Mark chapter 9, verse 22. If you're there, say amen. He said, often he had thrown him into the fire, telling Jesus, into the water to destroy him. We know that Satan come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But if you can do anything, see, that's what I was saying. If you can do anything, how, why is he asking that? Because he don't believe. He don't know. He don't know the will of God. You need to know the will of God is always to do something for you. See, he don't know if you can do anything. Well, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to those. If you can believe, all things are to those who, if you, say me. If I can believe, all things are possible to me. Let me tell everybody look at me. So possibilities for me is not definable by what you believe, baby. It's not defined about what they think it. It's defined about how I believe. If I can believe it, oh, he didn't say we. You know, that's French. We, we. He said, if I can believe, all things are to those that, so I'm thinking about that all day long. So when people tell me, I don't believe. I say, okay. Look at your name and say, okay. Because he said all things, he said, if I can believe. Point at yourself. I, if I can believe. All things are, are possible to those that believe. But watch it. Then the, the man come back, the father come back, and he said immediately, he, somebody say immediately. The father of the child cried out with tears. Lord, I believe, but help my, this lesson is all about helping your unbelief. That's what this, this whole, don't you never forget, I'm helping you about, this is going to help your unbelief. When I finish meditation, if you got into unbelief, I can't help you. That's what this, he said, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my, because a lot of us, we think we believe, no, we don't. That's different levels of believing. Go to James chapter number one. Amen. James chapter number one. This lesson is all about helping your unbelief. So how can I tell whether or not you have unbelief? I just look at you, what you say. I looked at you, how you act. See? Don't, you, you don't believe in tithing, you don't tithe. You don't believe in forgiving, you ain't forgiving people. You don't believe in walking in love, and you ain't doing the things. See, you got to be a doer of the word. See, let me tell you something. The only thing a man of God told me years ago, said, Terry, the only thing you believe is what you're doing. If you ain't doing, you it's just head knowledge. I believe God. No, you don't you have head knowledge. Remember? Okay, we're in James. I'm going to show you a couple things in James. Okay, where are we going? <laughs> James chapter number one. If you dare say man. Watch this here, family. Let's pick it up in verse. <laughs> Let's pick it up in verse 21. I'm in James chapter one, verse 21. Y'all ready? Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. I'm hoping you're receiving this word into your spirit. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your... That's what the body is. The body is in the mind. See, watch this here. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. You're only deceiving. You don't deceive. I ain't in, I ain't in deception. Because all things are, okay, 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 everybody look at me. I'm not in deception. I got the word on it. I know what you see. I've been instructed to not look at what I see. While I look not at the thing that are, uh, but the thing that are, uh, but the things that are, uh, are temperate, but the things that are not seen are, uh, I know what you see. But I haven't been instructed not to look at my bank account. I've been instructed not to look at my body. 
I've been instructed not to look at all the things. I've been instructed to look at the Word. The Word is eternal. I know what you see. You see the facts. I'm looking at the truth. I know what you see. I know, the, I know what the doctor said, but I also know what the prophet said. Come on now. now, who reports you're going to believe? See, who reports you're going to believe? I know what you see. I ain't in denial. Scripture believing is not denial. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's to believe the word of God over what you see. And this is true. That's, you're giving me the facts. If you not, everybody look at me. If you're not giving me the word, you're not giving me the truth. Because in, in every situation, that's, that's truth. In every situation, that's natural truth and spiritual truth. Remember in John chapter number, Matthew chapter number 16, he has disciples, who do men say that I am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you Elisha. Some say you Jeremiah. Some say you one of the other prophets. But then he said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter stood up out of all of them and said, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Now, Peter could have said, now, you're a marriage boy. You're Joseph's boy. That would have been the fact. But the truth is, he's the Christ. And then he said, because you got this revelation, I'm going to be in my house, my church on revelation. The church is built on revelation. The church ain't built on fact. The church is built on revelation. He said, now, Peter, because you, got, you didn't get this out of books. You didn't get this out of Ivory League school. You didn't get this out of Georgia Tech. You didn't get this out of Alabama. You didn't get this out of Stanford. You, my father let you in on who I am. And because my father let you in on who I am, I'm going to tell you who you are. You are Peter. And on this revelation, I'm going to be in my church and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Amen. Family. You got to get your, he said, that's why he said, people don't believe. This lesson is to help your unbelief. See, it's to help your unbelief. See, I know what you see. I'm with you. I see it too. I'm struggling with you too. I feel what you feel, but I choose. I walk by and not by See, I choose to quote what he said. This light affliction is but for a moment. What I'm going through is working exceeding eternal weight of glory for me. I know the facts. He said, you tell me every morning what the facts is. Now tell me the truth. Amen. Truth is, weeping may be endured for a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now let me tell you something. A, a night been been fifty seven years for me. See, a night been eighteen years. See, we got our nights bit messed up. See, people say we've been made. That's still true. But let me tell you something, baby. Joy is coming. How can you say that, pre? Because he said it. Weeping may endure for a night. How many of y'all been going through a night for ten years? Fifteen years. But joy, is, somebody say, joy is coming. Joy is coming. It's coming, man. Coming. See, we, see, people say, man, joy, that's true. And one day you're going to wake up and say, joy, it ain't going to see y'all looking at how when it get dark and when it get morning. That ain't how God see it. When you get revelation, joy has come. I got revelation. I ain't moved by what I see. I ain't moved by what I'm going. I'm moved by what I believe. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Stand up right in the midst of every hell breaking loose. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. So now watch this here, family. Watch this here, James chapter 1. But be doing the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. And if anyone is the hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observed himself and goes away and immediately 
forget what kind of man he was. Gonna walk right at these doors and say, Lord, I don't know how we're gonna eat today. Walk on these doors. Gonna walk right at these doors and say, Oh hell, breaking loose in my life. I got a little relief for a couple of hours, but you're deceiving yourself. You ain't got nothing coming. See? You ain't got nothing. Walk gonna walk right at them doors and forget what you heard. As soon as you get in the car, somebody need to elbow you, slap you. Say, did you just hear what the preacher, the prophet said? Amen. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. Baby, we ain't worried about tomorrow. We got enough for today. He promised today. Somebody say today. Amen. See, a man of God, see, a lot of us think we're in faith. But we're not. See, the bill is due on the first. Today is the 13th. That's how many days? 17, 18 days from now. When the day comes, the money is going to show up. I just spoke to somebody. See, we worried about things that's going to happen 17, 18. That ain't faith, baby. When the day comes, you don't know how it's going to come. Is somebody going to drop it out of a helicopter? If a, a, a donkey or a cow going to ring the doorbell? A check unexpected going to How many of y'all have had unexpected things that come before? Okay, okay, family. Watch this here. Watch this here. Let me just give y'all a few testimonies about myself. Things that happened in my life I didn't expect. Met Linda. Going to play basketball. In the car with some friends. But now I'm ready to get married again. Right? Then... Driving, some partners of mine looked out the window and said, man, that's a pretty woman. I said, they said, you think you can get her telephone number? <laughs> True story. She can tell you, hit the brakes. I was driving the first Lexus they had out, the LS400, black one, sunroof. Bag that thing up. <laughs> hit that button, let that window down. excuse me, ma'am. Can I say something to you for me? She came to the car. She said, who are you? And I told her, I'm the mayor of this town. <laughs> that was in May of, two, of 1991. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, nine months later, we married. Glory. I didn't wake up that morning knowing that I was going to meet her. When I met Penny, when I met Penny, I went to a basketball game to see Elliot Perry, another NBA player who was playing the league. He playing for University of Memphis then. Went there. Penny was on Proposition 48. He had to set out that year. If he don't set out that year, I don't meet him, but it's a divine connection. I was at a game. He come down and said, what's up, Terry? We talked for a minute. We exchanged phone numbers. God used that young man to take me all around the world. See? See, everything. See, I didn't know I was coming to Georgia. I didn't know I was going to New York City. I didn't know this, this, that, that. But let me tell you something. But when you, when the step, the, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. See, you don't know who you're going to meet before the end of the day. In other words, I said, I'll just say this here. You don't know how that money going to come in. I tell my daughter right now, I said, you, you apply for any school you want to go to. And I, I'm telling y'all what I tell her. You better believe. I said, when the time comes, you're going to have what you need, when you need it, and you're going to have everything. See? What? Because God told me years ago. He said, Terry, it ain't your job to come up with it. It's your job to believe it. See? And she's trying to go to the finest, one of the finest universities in the country. And I told her, baby, it's paid for. Your, I, your dad, your, look at me. Your dad ain't in, in unbelief. I'm, I know what the facts is. See, I know what kind of school I can send her to, but I ain't said God send her. Because I believe. I sold for other kids. See, I got a promise. When she need it, she going to have it. But if you look at the situation like now, it look crazy. Because I know you're looking at the fact. You need to look at the truth. The truth is, we're going to have what I need, when I need it, when I'm supposed to have it. I can't tell you how it's going to happen, but I know it's a done deal. Because I ain't playing with him. You say, what you mean you ain't playing with him? I'm doing what he tell me to do. If I'm doing what he tell me to do, I'm expecting him to do what he's supposed to do. See, a lot of us scatter God like that. I can't, let me tell you, I told y'all, Georgia wasn't on my mind. 
He said, you go to Georgia. And I packed my family up with three 18 wheelers and obeyed him. I'm looking for him to do what he's supposed to do. He said, I already know what you have need of before you ask me. You know my, my girl got to go to school. You know, you see all these bills. You see this here. Now, I'm expecting you to be who you are. That come down to believing. And he told me, he said, I'm the prophet of my life. I don't let things come out of my mouth that I don't want to see come in my life. When I say something, I, I want it. I know death and life is in the power of my tongue. I'm going to have what I say. And he said, all things are possible to me because I believe. Amen. I see what you see. I just choose not to believe it. I just choose not to focus on it. Amen. So, come on, back to James. Verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law, which is the word. Somebody say the word of God. Who looks into the word of God and continue in the word of God. See, that's meditation. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter, Matthew, John chapter 8, verse 31, 32. He said, if you can Continue in my word. If you continue in my word, you're going to know the truth. And the truth is going to make you, set you, make you, set you free. So he said, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, to the word of God, and continue in the word, and not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one would be blessed in what he what? Does. But if anyone among you think he is religious, tradition, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this one religious is what? Now, why would he say that? Everybody look at me. Because your heart, your heart, your spirit is the production center of your life. He says something very interesting. Okay, put your finger right there, family. I got to teach y'all. Y'all mind if I teach you, do you? Okay, go to Romans chapter number 10. I got to teach you this here. If not, you're going to continue to struggle. Hey, I got revelation. I'm believing, I'm God, I'm, I ain't believing, I know you're going to show up. I did what you told me to do, I'm expecting you to do. How many of y'all know your party, your, uh, God's part is easy? He needs for you to do what you said you're going to do. And Romans chapter number 10, let me show you this, this scripture here, you need to see this here. In Romans chapter number 10, we're going to look at verse number 8. Here's the key right here. He said, but what does it say? But what does it say? The word is near you. In your what, family? In your mouth and in your what? That is the word of faith which we what? Now everybody look at me. Go back to James chapter number one. This is what he's saying. He's saying, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He said, I know what you believe in and what you think in when you talk. That's why he said the word is near you. It, when you speak the word, it goes into your heart, your spirit. Your inner man and your heart is the production center of your life. It goes in and then eventually over meditation over time, it's going to come out. And what come out is what you're going to have in life. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, I know you believe in front of the preacher. I know you believe in the, in, in, in the, uh, with the believers all around you. I know they already know you're going to say the right thing. How you doing? I'm blessed going in and coming out. <laughs> Everything to my hand is blessed. The Lord's order my step. But soon as you get in that car, Lord, what we going to do? He said, I know you believe around believer. See, he said, you're deceiving yourself. And look at it, family. Verse 26, if anyone among you thinks. See, a lot of people think they're in faith. You ain't in faith, baby. If you believe, if you need something two or three days from now, and you, uh-uh. He said, you need to rest. It's going to show up for you. He said, anyone thinks he is religion and does not bridle his tongue. He deceives his own heart, and one religion is useful. See, he said, no, your tongue going to tell me. Your action going to tell me. Look at, go to, uh, watch this here, family. Go to chapter number two. I want you to see something. Let's start at verse 17. If you dare say amen. I'm in James 2, 17. Thus, also, faith by itself does not have works, it's dead. It's really where it believes. Believes, when you act on what you believe, it turns into faith. Everybody look at me. See, a lot of people believe. But if you don't act on it, it never turns into faith. And without faith, it is impossible. To... See, a lot of folks believe. It ain't enough to believe. When you act on what you believe, now it becomes, come on, family, 
when you act on what you believe, it becomes okay. Now, okay, okay. Let's bake some. Let's bake a. Let's bake a pound cake. Come on, come on, women. We need flour, eggs, sugar, butter, milk. Uh, 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 we're gonna bake a lemon. We need some lemon flavor. Now you got to put all these ingredients in there. See, we that's the that ingredients of a pound cake. But if you got to put all of it, then you got to mix it. And then you got to put that in that oven. See, if you put all that together and you don't put it in that oven, and you come to somebody, I come to you with a bowl of all the stuff we just put in there, and said, "Try my pound cake." What you gonna say? That's what you're doing on your job. You're saying, "Try my God." They saying, "Cause they don't see the result." You go in there and put that baby in that oven, let it stand there a long time, and go and say, "Try this." How you come up? We showing up, we keep telling them to believe something that we don't have proof about. See, you got to take that, all the ingredients, mix it, put it in that bowl, put it in that pan, and put it in there, and over time, that heat going to tell you what you got. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That heat going to tell you what your ingredients made up. <laughs> See, when the heat is on, it's going to tell you what's in the, what's in the pan. It's going to tell you what you believe. Because God, the devil, the devil going to test the authenticity of your believer. He sure is. See, when the heat comes, he said, the fire going to tell me what you made up. When good things are going on, good times are going on, baby, everybody, everybody celebrate. Let's see when the fire comes, what you made up. Watch this here, family. Verse 17, I'm in James 2, 17. Thus also faith by itself does not have works as dead. But someone would say, you have faith and I have works. i tell you what you do. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by works. You believe that there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. See, he said, look at me. He said, even demons believe. That's why when Jesus showed up on the scene, they said, why, man of God? He said, what did he say? How did they say why you come to torment us before our time? They recognize, he told them, shut up, be quiet. They even recognize that he was the son of God, but they knew that there's a lease on the earth, and the lease have to run its course for the devil is, is finished. See, and that's why Jesus, he called the demons out of that man, and they said, but permit us to go somewhere else. He said, you go into the swine, and the swines ran into the river. See, he said, even the demons believe. It ain't enough to believe. You got to act on what you believe. If you act on what you believe, baby, you're going to eat some lemon pound cake. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch this here, family. Watch this. Here. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you know what, oh foolish man? He said, you're foolish. That faith without works is what? It's really the word believing. Believing without works is dead. Was Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac's son on the altar? Do you see that faith will work together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture will fulfill that said, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as what? Right. It was a, he believed God, it was accounted to him as right. He was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified, you see being that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot, the prostitute, was justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit dead, so faith or believing without works is dead also. Everybody look at me. He says, so believing without works is dead also. This message, this lesson that I'm laying the foundation in the early state is about getting your believer up. Because you walking around, your Bible look like my Bible, coded, Underline everything. He said, you believe it. It ain't enough. Somebody say it's not enough. not enough. It starts with believing, but it don't end there. You got to act on what you believe. And when you act on it, it's going to turn to faith. And what you believe in God for is going to show up. He said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Go to Matthew chapter number 13. Matthew chapter number 13. Mm-hmm. Matthew chapter number what? Verse 54. Matthew 13, 54. 
Mm-hmm. Matthew 13, 54. Meditation is about helping your unbelief. It's about helping your what? He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. A lot of y'all believe, say, Lord, I believe, but help my... He said, okay, go to first start new beginning and listen to Pastor Terry. Because faith come by and hearing by. Mm-hmm. You hear the, it's going to help you. You're going to know. You might not do it, but you're going to know. Amen. You're going to know. You're going to know what to do. It's like my son T and most young people, they got commercials out. They on the telephone. They tell you, they show you the process of greatness. Now they want to know, okay, you already know the process. Well, what you going to do? Some people, we go out there for three days. We're working hard. Then they give up. No, they've been doing this year in, day in and day out, month in and month out, year in. And year. Now you see the finished result. You go out there for three to four, five days, and you think it's going to come to, no, you got to do it day in and day out, month in and for a year. Do, just do it one day at a time. That's the recipe for greatness. Amen. That's the recipe. So we see in Matthew chapter number 13, verse 54, if you're there, say amen. When he had come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. See, because he did it with unbelief. So there was a, they were stunned and said, what is this man talking about Jesus? Get this wisdom, these mighty words. Is this not the carpenter's son, this, his mother called Mary? The brother James, Joseph, Simon, Judah, and the sisters? Are they all with us? What did this man get all these things? So they offended him, and Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their... Because of their, if he didn't do many and mighty works there, he ain't going to do it in your life either. Because of, he's looking for a believer. And a believer who's acting on what he told you. Go to Mark chapter number 6. Mark chapter number 6, verse number 1. This lesson, meditation, is to help your unbelief. Amen. If I'm doing my job and you do what you're supposed to do and you meditate on this word day and night, it's going to eradicate, it's going to destroy our unbelief. Amen. It's going to destroy unbelief. Mark, Mark chapter number 6, verse number 1. If you dare say amen. Then he went from there and came to his own country. His disciples followed him. He went the Sabbath, the Sunday, it was Saturday. He began to teach. See, that's how you have unbelief, by teaching. And many hearing was stunned. Many hearing was what? Everybody look at me. Everybody, everybody look at me. Everybody look at the pastor. That man can teach. Well, because I'm teaching on the Holy Spirit. See, I'm teaching on the power. I'm anointed to teach. And everybody's astonished. Baby, you ain't coming here to hear that I'm a, to be astonished about my teaching. You ain't here to receive what I'm teaching you and go out there and make it work. See, people get caught up in the gift. People come in and they cheer you on. Go, Pastor, go. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Go, Pastor, go. Hoo, hoo. No, 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 baby. You come in here to receive, believe it, and walk out that door and say, it's on, devil. Amen. See, people get caught up. See, he said, come out to stand. Get in the game. You are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness. Lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily beset you. Amen. And run with endurance. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your... Don't y'all, I don't need for you to cheer me on. You know I want for you to cheer me on. When you come in and say, Pastor, it works. What happened? They, they doubled my salary. Pastor, I ran out of ingredients in my business. Pastor, they gave me a promotion I'm unqualified for. That's how you cheer me on. I said just last week when I left this son, I said something supernatural going to happen for somebody this week. And I expect it to happen. See, I'm looking for you to win. I ain't just saying stuff to say to come, but for you to come to church. I'm looking for somebody to say, I receive that where I'm believing. God, I believe the prophet. See? He ain't asking you to do it. He's asking you to believe it. And all of a sudden, when they come, you receive it. And say, Pastor, you ain't going to believe. Don't never tell a man of God what he won't believe. Just tell me what happened. <laughs> Watch this here, family. Watch this here. And they and many hearing were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed at his hand? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of Joseph, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are not his sister here with us? So they were offended at him. And Jesus said to him, a prophet without honor, except his own country, his own relatives, his own house, 
Now he could not do many mighty works there, except he laid his hand on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their, he marveled because of their, mm -hmm, Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter, he marveled because of the unbelief. He marveled. Because, do you believe that I'm able to do this? He, when you in unbelief, he's in the, you know what marvel means? The word marvel means to stare. The word marvel means to, to graciate, to, to be as strong. You know, you see some, it's like, I watch greatness. When I see greatness, I sit there and go, oh, sit there. whatever feel it might be, I marvel that God is moving. Here goes Jesus. When you in unbelief, he's going, he marveling because of your, he's saying, what's wrong with you? He marveled because of your unbelief. That's terrible, family. You don't want that to happen in your life. Where I tell you to turn? Mark chapter 16. This is when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, and he told them, he told them, in three days I'm going to be resurrected. Didn't he tell them that? Okay, let's pick it up. Let's pick it up, Dean, in verse 6. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. Angel talking. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell the disciples. What's a disciple? A disciple is a learned one. They the one, the disciple, they, they the, the one that he taught for three and a half years. Go tell his what? Just say I'm a disciple. No, you're a disciple. Watch this here, family. He said, go tell the disciples in Peter that he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons, and went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not, they did not what? After that he appeared in another form to two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe, believe them either. Lady appeared to eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their what, family? He rebuked their what? Unbelief and hardness of heart, their stubbornness, because they did not believe those who seen him after he had risen. He rebuked their what? And if he rebuked their unbelief, he going to rebuke your and stubborn of heart. He said, because you don't believe. See, because you don't what? Because you don't believe. Go to Hebrews chapter number 3. Hebrews chapter number 3. Mm -hmm. This lesson is to help your unbelief. Hebrews chapter number 3. Hebrews. Chapter number 3, if you dare say man, pick up in verse number 7. Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 7. Y'all ready? Watch them. Everybody look at me. Pay attention. This is game changing time now. See, God cha he changed your life right now. This is game changing. You're going to know what to do. Now watch this effect. Let's pick up on every word. I'm in Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit, what? See, Holy Spirit is who? God. He's the comforter, he's the counselor, teacher, revealer, helper, strengthener, advocate, intercessor. Watch this here. Today, if you hear his voice, how many of y'all hear the voice of God today? Everybody look at me. How you, everybody said, he, said, he said, today, if you hear his voice, how many of y'all hear the voice of God today? How y'all hearing the voice of God? Say it through my pastor. Say it through the word. You're hearing his voice through the word. He said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Remember, he rebuked their unbelief and stubbornness of heart, pride. He said, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart in rebellion. In the day of trial, in the wilderness, okay, everybody look at me. Everybody look, this is good right here. He said, most of us, I well, know most of us, we don't rebuke God when things are going good. It's when your trial in the wilderness come, you start speaking all that stuff in your heart. See, you got to settle right now. No matter what come my way, I'm going to believe God. You got to settle. You got to draw a line right now. So, devil, no matter what you bring, I'm going to stand here and believe. You got to settle that before the trial comes. Don't get in the wilderness and think you're going to believe God. It's too late. 
Like the man said, don't let somebody break in your house and you run down to your exercise room and start lifting weight. It's too late, baby. <laughs> See, you want to work out. Somebody broke in your house. Now you want to go down there. Okay, you, you hear them upstairs moving. You trying to get some sex. It's, look at your neighbors. It's too late. You got to sell that now. So when they show up, you look the devil right in the face that he's still going to do it. You got to be like the Hebrew boy said, King, we don't need to pray about it. We don't need to think about it. That God, who's on our side, he's able and will deliver us out of this fire of the furnace. You got to be like Daniel before they put you in the line. Then said, King, oh, oh, great king, don't worry about it. Put me in there. That God who I serve shall deliver me, and he'll shut their mouth. See, Daniel, the Bible says Daniel, he knew the writing was signed, that you couldn't pray to no other God. And the Bible says he still went in there with his window open. A lot of y'all know we to close the blinds. Because anybody, they catch you praying, they're going to put you in the lines then. And down said, King, get some rest. And God shut their mouth. God will shut your enemy mouth. If you believe, what you believe? That vengeance belongs to him, he's going to repay. Watch this here, family. Last scripture. Come on, come on, come on. Last scripture. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in rebellion. In the day of trial, in the day of what? In the wilderness. Everybody got the day of trial. Your day coming. Say my day coming. Say, say, when my day come, I shall win. Say, when my day come, I'm going to confess the word. Say, when my day come, I'm going to believe God. That's what he said. He said the same thing in the book of Ephesians. Be strong and low in the power of might. See, when he said, having done all to stand. When the evil day come, stand. Watch this here, family. Where your father tested me. See, in the wilderness, in hard time, you're being tested. You're being proven. How did, let everybody tell me, how they test steel? With heat, with fire. See, what they call, what they call them windows? They call unbreakable windows, what they call them? Temper steel. Temper window. How? By fire, baby. How? When he said, when fire hits you, whatever left is what I'm going to use. See, fire is there to burn up all the impurities. He said, man of God, whatever left, when you finish standing, that's what I'm going to use. See, a lot of us, when the fire comes, you ain't there, baby. You're you like Peter the rabbit. You go. <laughs> he already told you, having done all to stand to See, he said, the fire, the fire is burning off. Let me tell you something. The fire is burning off all them people. He don't want to be with you. He bringing up all them haters, all them people. I'm with you, pastor. I'm with you, man of God. I'm with you, woman of God. Soon as the fire come, the Bible says, if they left Jesus, they're going to leave you too. You want to know who your real friends are? When the fire come, whoever's standing with you, when, they, when you're going through something, them your friends. Can somebody help this preach up in here? Because when everything is going good, that's my girl. That's my boy. When the fire hit, like they did Joe, the Bible said all of them scattered. If they, even Peter said, Lord, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Peter, before the, before the rooster crow, you're going to deny me three times. Peter cursed that girl out. All of a sudden, it, uh, Peter denied Jesus three. All of a sudden, he heard, uh, 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 uh. And the Bible said Peter was sad because he didn't want to. Come on, family, let's get back. Come on, watch this here. Where your father tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. God said you saw my works in your life. You saw what some of the things I done did for you. He said, don't you remember? Come on, verse number 10. Therefore, I was angry with, with the generation and said they always go astray in their heart. That's what believing is. Believe is in your heart. You confess with your mouth, but you believe with your heart. And they have not known my ways, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, my anger, that they should not enter my... Now everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. The reason your pastor teaches is, I'm going to give you some rest. When you believe, I want everybody, this is, this is what I want you to think about all week. When you believe God, you got to rest. I always told us to be anxious for nothing. It, see, you see people, he said, they, they all antsy and, and anxious. What's going to happen? And they're going to put us out and we're going to be homeless. I ain't going to be able to pay my car. No, 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 no. This lesson about rest. When you believe, you got rest. 
He said, you're going to have to labor to enter into my rest. If you ain't got rest, you don't believe. Oh, I know I wish I can get into it, but my, my time is up. He said, perfect love casts out all fear because fear involves torment. When you in torment, in fear, you don't have rest. You don't believe. Now, let me finish. I'm going to get on that next week. Beware, verse 12. Beware, brother, that there be in any of you an evil heart of, come on, that be an evil heart of, so unbelief is having an evil what? Heart. Depart from the living God, but exhort one another daily, which is called today. Somebody say today. Yeah. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence. Remember, he who begun the good work in you shall complete it. We have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the, to the. He said, if you give up, I'm going to have no pleasure in you. While well, let's say it today. Somebody say today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in rebellion. For who haven't heard rebelled? Indeed, was it not who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, who course fell in the wilderness? And to whom he did swear? He did what? Now everybody look at me. You see this here. Remember you go into the court, I promise to tell the, the whole truth. I want you to see God's hand on your life right now. He's doing this to you. He's talking to you. How many of y'all know that he ain't talking to them? How many of y'all know he's talking to you? Now I want you to see, every, all this week I want you to see this picture right here. Now what did he say? Verse 18. And to those did he swear that they would not enter his, they would not enter to his what? But to those who did not what? Obey, or one train they said dis, disbelief. He, look at everybody, look at me. He said, if you don't believe, I swear, you ain't going to my rest. He can't let you get in. When you believe him, you're going to have a peace that surpasses all understanding. He, he said, I swear, you ain't going to get in unless you, you ain't going to have no rest until you come into me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your, but I swear, if you don't believe, you ain't going to get this rest. Come on, last scripture, verse 19. So we see. So we what? So we see that they could not enter in because of. And if they didn't enter in because of unbelief, you're not going to enter in either because of. Why? Because he said, I, I swear, I what? But if you believe, you're going to have a rest. You're going to have a rest. He said, they didn't enter in because of unbelief. You ain't, that's why I'm teaching this. So you can meditate on his peace, knowing that God is with you. I know old hell broke. I'm going to teach a series on that one day. God gave it to me this past week. He said, everybody I said that I was with, I took them through hell. Joseph, I'm with you. Yeah, but you got to go through a pit. You got to go through Miss Potiphar's house. You got to go through prison. Moses, I'm with you, but you're going to have to go through 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years with the children of Israel, but I'm still with you. David, I'm with you, yeah, but you, I'm going to be with you while Saul throwing at you, trying to I'm going to teach a series on that one day. See, one lady said, God, if you're with me, all while Gideon said, if God is with us while all this hell going on, I'm still with you. I'm going to teach a series on that one day. I swear, come on, everybody raise your hand. Come on, I swear. I would not enter in unless I believe. God I believe you in Jesus' name. How many of y'all received that rest? Hallelujah. Man, receive the rest. Hallelujah. Receive it. You don't get there. Family, I got so much to teach you. I can't get it in all in 50 minutes. It, I promise, I got so much to teach you. Take it easy. People dying because of stress. Man, that's a, they stressed out. He said, if you believe me, you enter to my rest. I'm going to show you. He said, and he said, your life already, I know every day of your life before you took the first step. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know. But you're going to have to believe it and act on it. Give the Lord another hand praise.